Jesus set the record straight. Go to your Bibles right now in John 10. Lord, we thank you for what you have done thus this far. We give you praise. We give you glory. It's preaching now, oh, Father God, and we declare that we need you, Lord. We need you now, Lord, to anoint our ears, our hearts, our minds, that we may uh, incline unto you. We may hear from heaven, hear from heaven. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. We thank you that Jesus is in love. We thank you that he demonstrates that love on the cross, that he died, that we may have life, that his blood was shed because of his love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Or you're stationed at John chapter 10. Hallelujah. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to track with me on scriptures. We got them to them maybe a little late. Uh, but amen. 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 John chapter 10. I'm going to begin reading at verse 9. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. amen. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Yeah. The, the thief come not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd give his life for the sheep. But he that is a howling and not the shepherd whose own, own the sheep or not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and, not, and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knows me, even so I the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, one shepherd. Therefore do my Father love me, because I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No man take it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Jump over to verse 27. My sheep, here is my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I, and I give unto them eternal life, and they should perish, and they should never perish, neither should any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, don't miss this, my Father which gave them me. I'm going to read that again. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my hand. I and my Father are one. Don't miss that. I and my Father are one. And the Jews took up stone again to stone them. I'm preaching to you today that Jesus set the record straight before his departure. Set the record straight before his departure. Sometimes, Dr. Smith, you just got to set the record straight. In a world full of injustice, malice, hatred, and deception, you just have to set the record straight. You have to let people know I'm not just going to lay down and continue to take the abuse without letting them know who you truly are who I truly am. Jesus said, if I wanted to, I can call a host of angels to come to my rescue. Sometimes you just have to let people know who, who and whose you are. Amen? You get tired of people lying on you, don't you? Tired of people lying on you. You get tired of people misunderstanding your intention. You get tired of being neglected and rejected. You get tired of people taking your kindness for weakness. You get tired of being taken advantage of and underestimated. You just have to set the record straight and put people back in their place. Y'all want to with me? You want to hear this? Amen. Because Jesus, is within days of his departure, 
It's within days of his crucifixion, the, 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 the humiliating death of the cross for the sins of the world. It's time to set the record straight that no man takes my life, but I lay it down. Amen. 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 Jesus set the record straight on several, th several things throughout his 33 years on this earth. He set the record straight on his earthly parents, Mary and Joseph, that Joseph is not, Joseph is not my father. Didn't you know I have to be about my father's business? Who is my mother and father? Those that do my father's will. Amen. Who is my mother and brother? Those that do the will. He set the record straight. Amen. He set the record straight with Nicodemus, the one that came by night, that, that in order to hurt the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Amen. He just set the record straight. He set the record straight on who God is. He set the record straight on what heaven is like. Heaven is like none to this. He set the record straight on who the devil is, that he is a thief and a liar. He set the record straight. So in John chapter 10, he set the record straight on why he came, on who he is, on his death and on his return. Amen? God keeps records whether you know it or not. God keeps records. Just like any business, God, you know, kingdom business got to keep records. So, and God is a good record keeper. Amen? Amen. He's a good record keeper. In fact, it says that in Exodus, in, in, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 24, it says this here. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and thou shalt sacrifice thereupon thy burnt offering and thy peace offering, thy sheep and thy own. In all places where I record my name, I will come, and come unto thee and will bless thee. That his name is recorded right here in this place. His name is recorded at the Red Sea. His name is recorded when they raised Lazarus from the grave. He keeps records, amen? He keeps records on himself, amen? But not only that, he keeps records on you. God keeps records on you. It's recorded in Deuteronomy chapter 30, chapter 30, verse 19. It says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against who? Against you. That I have set before you life and death, blessing and curses, cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God keeps records on you. Then, of course, you know there's the books that are in heaven. Amen. You might not have a criminal record. You may have, you might have lost your, 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 trans, your transcript. You may have tore the marriage certificate up, but you got a heavenly record. Amen. You got a heavenly record. And it's in the books, amen? It's in the books, Revelation 20, verse 12. It says this, And I saw the dead and the small and great stand before God, and the books were open. The books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the deeds were judged out of those things which were written in the book. Again, you may not have a criminal record, but you got a heavenly record, amen? Oh, I feel like preaching this thing. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Job says in, in Job 16, 19, he said, my witness is in heaven and my record is on high. Amen. John the Baptist even bear a record. John the Baptist says this in John chapter 1, verse 32 and 34. He says, John bear a record saying, I saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and the bold up on him. 34, 34 said, and I saw and bear a record that this, it's the son of God. Amen. Oh, he just said the record straight today. Jesus even bear a record. Amen. This is going to come into play later. So, but listen up. Jesus in John 8, verse 13 to 14. The Pharisees, therefore, said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, Though I bear record of myself, my record is true. For I know which I came and where I go. <laughs> I know which I came and where I go. You cannot tell which I came and where I go. That's going to come into play later. Remember that, amen? So Jesus just said in the record straight. Then I'm going to give you one more which is going to blow your mind. In 1 John chapter uh, 5, verse 7 and 11, it says this right here. Hmm. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, it says, for well, there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and the three are one. Then it says there are three on earth, 
There are three that bear witness on earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And they three agree. Amen. We're talking about records, amen, that God keeps records on you. God keeps records on, on himself. Even Jesus buried records, amen. Hallelujah. So today we're setting the record straight. We're setting the record straight on why he came, who he is, on his death and his return. So on why he came. We know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why he came, because God sent him. God sent him. He came at the request of the Father, the creator of the universe. He came because the Father sent him. God himself, God himself, dressed up in the, in the, in the person of Jesus, amen, came. Emmanuel, God with us, he came because he was sent. It's not complicated. It's faith. It's faith. He took on sinful flesh to redeem man. And now John chapter 10 and verse 9, he said he came to save the lost. Amen? He came, in fact, we know he came to seek and to save the lost. And if you lost, Jesus can find you. Amen? If you lost, Jesus can find you. The problem is that men don't like to ask direction, Pastor Smith. But if you confess that you are lost, Jesus can find you. It says in Verse 10 of John 10, that, that he came that they might, that they might have abundant life. And abundant life is not abundant stuff. It's joy, peace, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. But the word might in the Greek, it, it might it means to be to made possible, that, that can be made to, to made, that, 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 that is yours for the taking. Amen? That they might have abundant life. In verse 11 through 15, he came to, to give his life but also to give life, amen, to give his life as a ransom for the propitiation of our sin, for the payment of our sins, amen. He came for you, he came for me, amen. You have to understand the culture of the shepherd. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The culture of the shepherd, Brother Simon, is that the shepherd has to make a charge, a, 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 a pledge, that he will do everything to save that sheep. That he would give his life. This would mean costing him his life. It wasn't just going to wake up, I'm going and shepherd some sheep. No, he had to make a pledge that he was willing to die for that sheep. That's why David said, I killed the bear and I killed the lion. They came up to my sheep and I killed them. It was me or it was them or, or my sheep, me or them, or, or, or the bear and the lion. He killed them. So it wasn't just, I'm just going to shepherd some sheep. No, you have to make a pledge, a charge to keep I have. Amen. Hallelujah. He came in verse 16 to unite the children of God. That, 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 that one God, one faith, one baptism. Jew, Gentile, Greek. There's no Jew, no Gentile, no Greek, bond or free. Red, yellow, black or white. We are all precious in his sight. He came to unite. Oh, but he came to separate too. Amen. He came to separate too. It says in verse 16 that he separates those that are not his children. Amen. And just like Pastor Mickey preached last week about the, the weed and the terror. Oh, when the saints come marching in. When the saints come marching in, I want to be in that number. There's going to be wheat, there's going to be terror, there's going to be sheep, there's going to be goats. What side are you going to be on when the saints come marching in? He came to unite, he came to separate, amen? Are you with me? Hallelujah, bless his name. Hallelujah, when the saints come marching in. He came in verse 25 to do the work of the Father, for the Spirit of God is upon me. He has known me to preach the gospel in the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. He said that not my will, but your will be done. He said I must be about my Father's business. Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve. He didn't come to be like. He didn't come to join your club. He didn't come to be a member of your church. He didn't come to be popular or rich. He didn't, he didn't come to seek fame or fortune in this world. No, no, he came to destroy the yoke of bondage of the enemy himself, the devil himself. Amen. He came to utterly, utterly defeat the devil, to put him in his rightful place, back in the pit of hell. I was to the abyss. That's why he came, to destroy the yoke of bondage. Bless his holy name. He just said the record straight. He said the thief come but to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came, but I came, but I came that they, that they, that they may have eternal life. Who is the day? Who is the day? The chosen of God, the obedient of God, the call of God, the elect of God. 
That's the day. Amen. Hallelujah. He came for you. He came for me. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open it, I will come. And, and if you hear my voice, I will open the door and I will come to him and sup with him and him with me. The day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Whosoever will, let him come. I would no wise cast him out. That's why he came. He came to save. Amen. He came to save. He came to reconcile, reconcile men unto himself. That God was in Jesus reconciling men unto himself. It says in John 17, as thou hast sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. He came to send us that we may go out into the world to, to, to share this good news. Amen. Amen. Jesus just set the record straight. So that's why he came. Let's talk about who he is. Bless it. Jesus set the record straight on who he is. So Matthew 16. Barbara, you know what? Jesus asked the disciples, who the man say that I am? Some say Elijah. Some say Jeremiah. Some say John the Baptist. But who do you say that I am? And that's Peter. That's Peter. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. The son of the living God. Blessings on thy boy, John. Son, John. Blessing and blood and reveal that to you. Thou art the Christ. He came. So let's say who he is. Hallelujah. Son of the living God. We walk those verses again. We see in, we see in uh, verse 9 that he is the keeper of the sheep. We see in verse 11 that he is the good shepherd. You want a good shepherd? Want a good shepherd? Go back to the office and ask Dr. Omar to come out here. You want a good shepherd? Where's pa Pastor Mickey at? Raise your hand, Pastor Mickey. You want a good shepherd? That's a good shepherd. That was a good shepherd. You want a good shepherd? Look at Dr. Frank Smith. Good shepherd. Hallelujah. Amen. Good shepherd. The epitome. He is known as a father in verse 15. He's a miracle worker. He, he, he healed the lepers. He, the dumb is talking. The lame is walking. Mm. Who he is. He's a miracle worker. He and the father is one, it says in verse 30. He is God. In verse 38, we kept on reading down. That he is God. He is the son of God. He is the lamb of God. Amen. He is known of the father. He's not some charlatan. He ain't some charlatan. He is known of the father. He's not some howling. Oh, you want to know what howling look like? Brother Dominic, what howling look like? Thank God we don't have a howling. If we had a howling, let a fire break out in this church. A howling going to get his keys to his car. He's going to get his check. He's going to beat the kids out the door. Thank God we don't have a howling. Hey, Amen. He's going to beat the kids out the door. That's what howling going to do. Thank God we don't have a howling. Amen. Lord, I help those churches that have a howling in there. That's their leader. Amen. He is known of the Father. He's not some fly-by-night preacher, self-appointed prophet. He's known of the Father. He didn't come as a wolf in sheep clothing. He's known of the Father. He has credentials. He has credentials. I tell you, I tell you who he's not. If that good English, I tell you who he is not. He's not crazy. Amen. If I kept on reading, they said, uh, Sister Barnes, they, they said that, that Jesus was mad, that he had a devil in him. You think Jesus got a devil in him? You think he's mad? If he, it's, uh, the, the devil, how, how the devil going to heal himself? He's mad. The devil needs to heal himself. Amen. You say, how, how can the devil talk about the goodness of God? How can the devil give a blind back his sight? Amen. Now, he ain't got no devil. He ain't mad. He know who he is. He's Jesus. Amen. He's Jesus. Say he have a devil. Don't get it confused or mixed up who Jesus is. Amen. He is God. He's God, the one that's asked for the sacrifice. Mm. This is something. The one that asked for the sacrifice. The one that became the sacrifice. And the one that received the sacrifice. That's God. That's God. To ask for something, to be that something, to receive that something. That's God. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Huh. That's God. He is God. He's God. Yes. Anybody know Josh McDowell? Josh McDowell was a confessed atheist, Brother Abdi. Confess that. You, you ever hear of Josh McDowell? Who out here is Josh McDowell? Confess atheist. Confess atheist. 
He went out to prove that, that God didn't exist. He went out to prove that Jesus was just a hoax. He picked up that word, and God, bless him, he got saved. Picked up that word and got saved. You don't want to be changed, don't you? Don't pick that word up. Pick that word and got saved. Now he's one of the chief apologists, one of the chief evangelists for, for, for the church. Amen? In fact, he wrote this book, Evidence That Deserve a Verdict. Doc McDowell, atheist. After Evidence Deserve a Verdict, he wrote this little book. He wrote this little book that Jesus was either a liar a lunatic or Lord. Now I know he's not a liar. He's not a lunatic, so he must be what? He must be what? He must be Lord. Amen. That's who he is. He's Lord. Jesus set the record straight. Scripture set the record straight on who he is. Amen. Scripture says he's the way, he's the truth to life, he's the resurrection in the life, he's the high priest, he's the holy one of Israel, he's, he's Emmanuel, God with us, he's the king of kings, the Lord of lords, he's the living water, he's the bread of life, he's wonderful, he's counselor, he's mighty God, he's prince of peace, amen? He's the apple and omega, the beginning and the end, he's great I am. He is the author and finisher of our faith, he is the light of the world, he is the express image of the invisible God. He is the mighty lion of the Jews, mighty lion of the Jews. He is the word of God, he just is. He just is. Jesus is. He just is. There's none like him. None like him. No one like him. He just set the record straight. Sometimes you have to let the world know who you are and that you belong to Jesus. You have to set the record straight on who you are in Christ. I better come down here for this. Pastor Smith, you know me well, right? You know me pretty good. Since you, you, you know me, you, you know I'm, I'm straight, right? I'm good? <laughs> Dominic, you, you just meet me, right? <laughs> now, Simon, you, you've been around me a little while, so you, you know me. Pastor Simon, you, you, you know I'm straight, right? Okay. <laughs> Dr. Elmar, if you hear me, you, you, you know I'm good, right? Okay. Today, I'm coming out the closet. I'm coming out the closet. I'm in love with another man. I'm in love with another man. I'm in love with another man. His name is Jesus. I'm in love with another man. I'm in love with another man. I love him. I love him. I love him. Now, now, now they're going to see this on YouTube, and they're going to tell Pastor, you got a man in love with another man. That's all right. Tell him to me. I'll set the record straight. I'm in love with Jesus. I love him because he first loved me. I'm in love with another man. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. If you have any sense, you'll tell your you'll tell the truth that you're in love with another man. Go ahead, you sitting with your wife or your husband, just tell them I'm in love with another man. I'm in love with another man. His name is Jesus. He is God. He is God. Oh. I'm in love with him. I'm not ashamed to say I'm in love with another man. His name is Jesus. Brothers, if you just got to be in love with a man, why not make it Jesus? He is God. He is God. He can kill you. He, he, he can heal you. He can deliver you. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. I keep his commandments. I love him. Honey, I'm in love with another man. <laughs> Guys, go home, tell that significant other that you're in love with another man. Girl, ladies, go home, tell that gigolo, that want to be diva, I'm in love with another man. You just send the record straight. I'm in love with Jesus. 
I love him. I love him because through 65 years, he's been there. He's been there 65 years. He's been there. Bless his name. Anybody here know Gladys Knight in the Pips? Y'all know Gladys Knight in the Pips? You keep the Pips, give me Gladys. Gladys has a song out. She has a song that if anyone should ever write, my life story. She said, anyone who's ever life, my life story, that you'll be there through every line of pain and glory. Well, that's mean that, that Jesus would be there through every line of pain and glory. Anybody write my life story? Because he is the best thing that ever happened to me. He is the best thing that ever happened to me. My wife is a blessing to me. But Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. This church is a good place for me, but Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. I got a BA degree, but Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. There's a lot of money that flow through these hands in the 65 years, but Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. And he will be there through every line of pain and glory. I'm in love with Jesus. I'm in love with him because he first loved me. Because he loved the sheep. He loves the sheep. He's in love with you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for a friend. It says there in verse 17, Therefore do my father love me, because I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus set the record straight, that he is true, that he truly is God. He is the lover of the sheep. So we know why he came. We know who he is. Y'all still with me? Yeah. You ain't gonna pick up no stone and stone me. Don't pick up no stone and stone me. And not today. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> Blessed be his name. So he, let's set the record straight on his death. Let's set the record straight on his death. It is clear that he came to give his life. It's clear that he came to die. Romans 5, 12 said that through one man sin, sin entered into the world. Verse 17 that says, so through one man that sin was removed from the world. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, set the record straight on his death. In John 19, that mockery of a trial, week before, weeks before, they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And then they turned to crucify him. Crucify him. How you go from Hosanna to crucify him? Mm. So in John 19, let me go to that verse 5 through 6. It said, then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns a purple robe, and Pilate, he's that Pilate, Pilate said unto him, Behold the man. When the chief priests, therefore, and the officers saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye and crucify him, for I find no fault in this man. I find no fault in this man. Crucify him, crucify him. I tell you, that's a setup. It was a setup. He came to be crucified. He came to die. Amen. In fact, it says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8, that if they, had, if they would have known who he was, they wouldn't have crucified the Lord. Amen. He came. He came to that. He came to be crucified. So now he's in that judgment hall with Pilate. This is interesting. Interesting. He says, he went again to the judgment hall and this is Pilate. Said unto Jesus, Which art thou? Which art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Jesus gave no answer. Jesus was comfortable without giving him no answer because he already bare a record. He said, I know which I am. And I know who where I go. He had to give him no answer. 
But powder is driving them crazy. Which art thou? Which art thou? Basically, he's saying to that mocking of the child, he asked, Which art thou? And Paul is kind of confused over who Jesus is. Who are you, man? What are you? Where do you come from? I haven't seen nothing like you. Which art thou? And Jesus was comfortable not saying nothing. But he got up under his skin. When he said, I got power over you. When somebody tell you they got power over you, you better go set the record straight. But don't do your boss like that until you got your check in your hand. I'm just helping you. I don't want you to go back. I don't want you to go back tomorrow and get fired until you got your check in your hand. <laughs> Which are thou? Who are you, man? I never seen nothing like you. Don't you know I have the power? Ain't that so stupid? I have the power. Which he did, I guess. You know. I have the power to set you free, to crucify you or release you. And Jesus answered. That no man, no man have power unless the Father has given it to you. You got no power unless the Father has given it to you. No man take my life, but I lay it down. If I lay it down, I'll pick it up again. Y'all know that German philosophy, philosopher Frederick Nietzsche. Anybody know Frederick Nietzsche? Well, y'all heard the phrase, God is dead. You heard that phrase before, God is dead. That came from Frederick Nietzsche. Now, Frederick Nietzsche was born in, I think, 1840. And he didn't say it verbally from his mouth that God is dead. He wrote it in a book in 1882. And I'm going to tell you what the, what the book says. Okay. He says, have you heard of the madman who led a, count, a lantern in the bright morning hours, ran to the marketplace and cried insanely, I seek God, I seek God. As many people of those who do, did not believe in God were standing around just then, he provoked even much laughter. Where is God? He cried. Where is God? And, and they said, I should tell you, we have killed them. You say, we have killed them. You and I are all murderers. God is dead. God remains dead, and we have killed them. That's in 1882. But in 1890, Frederick Nietzsche was dead. 1890, he died of a mental illness and a brain tumor. That he was dead, amen? Oh, Brother Nietzsche. And, so, and saints. You may kill him in your imagination. But he's not dead. You may put him out of your school, but he's not dead. You may remove him from your government, but he's not dead. World, you may even kill him in your books, your dreams, your movie, but he is not dead. Amen. He's alive. Amen. Y'all remember that big old boat? Y'all remember that big old boat, the, the Titanic? Y'all remember that big old Titanic? There was some fool that said that even God can't sink this stuff. Anime. He said, even God can't sink this ship. Now, I ain't saying God sunk the Titanic, but he showed didn't help it. He showed didn't save it. He didn't save it. I ain't saying he sunk it, but he didn't save it. You better watch how you mock God. Amen. Watch how you mock God. Hallelujah. He just said the record straight. Hallelujah. Three absolutes about God, that God is real, that God cannot die, that God cannot lie. Amen. He just set the record straight on his death. Amen? Bless him, bless him, bless him. So let's set the record straight on his return. Amen? I see the musicians coming in. Does that mean my time is up? I can, I can split for you. Are y'all tired? Y'all want me to preach it? Y'all want me to rap it? Preach it or rap it? Preach it or rap it? Preach it. Oh, it, 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 it I, I tell you, it give me five, six minutes. You're going to be blessed. Can you have five minutes? Okay, five. 
Can he have five? The, the, the Lord okay, can he have five? The, okay, the Lord's going to say it. That's 15 the, the, minutes. The, 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 the I got, Lord, you. The I got you 15 minutes. All right, all right. Five, five, and five. Oh, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus just said the straight on his death. That no man take my life, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I pick it up again. The cross was merely, it wasn't thrust up on him. He accepted the cross. He wasn't a victim of circumstance. He volunteered for this task. He volunteered. Here I am. Send me. Here I am. Send me. Jesus saw the cross and glory working together. Amen. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, it said that the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And it says in John 12, I be lifted up on earth. I would draw all men unto me. Amen. Amen. Let me give you something on his return. Amen. The empty, the empty grave proves the resurrection. The empty grave proves the resurrection and the return. Amen. John 14, verse 1 and 6 says, I go and prepare a place for you. Where I go, I will return for you. That where I am, that you may be also. In John 11, verse 25, we talked to Martha and, Mer and Martha and Mary after the raising of Lazarus. I am the resurrection and the life. I got resurrection power. Resurrection power. Revelation 21 says, verse 1 and 2, that there was a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. And there was a king sitting on the throne, Zion. Amen. Revelation chapter 22, verse 7. Verse 7 says, and behold, this is Jesus, and behold, I come quickly. That's why I know he's coming back. I come quickly, Revelation 22 and 12. Behold, I come quickly, and my rewards are with me. Revelation 22 and 20 says, Jesus guarantees his become. He return. Revelation 22, verse 20 says, and surely I come. That's a guarantee. Surely I come. How I know he's coming? How I know he's coming? Because I'm still here. That's how I know he's coming. Because I'm still here, because you still here, because the church is still here. That's how I know he's coming back. Amen. 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 Hmm. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, that you are God. You have to prove yourself to no man. When you destroyed the world back in the days of Noah, you could have said that was it. When Adam first sinned, you could have said that was it. But you had a plan from day one. Before the foundation of the earth, you had a plan. And we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're so real in our lives, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for eternal life, oh Lord. Thank you for salvation, oh Father. Thank you, Lord, we have a home over in glory. That we're not abandoned, God. That we have abundant life, even on this earth right now, because of you. So, Lord, I pray that if there's someone here that don't know you, God, that they will come, Lord, and they will realize who you are has been proven why you came, been proven of who you are. They would stop running, they would give their life even today. Will you give your life today if you don't know him? If that's you, will you just say, here I am, Jesus? If you're not ashamed, tell my love. I love you, Lord. Oh, you can say it loud. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Because Jesus is love. Dr. Martin. Bless you, church.
for healing my body. Thank you for my wife, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for saving me when I was a kid. I was a kid. The Lord saved me at 10 years old, and I'm still here. Greater love has no man than this. Greater love has no man than this. I am his friend. I'm his friend. Talk about me if you want to, but I'm his friend. I'm his servant. I surrender to him. I love him. Y'all just don't know. You don't know. You don't know where I've been. Where you found me from. Let's all stand and rejoice with him. Hallelujah. Oh, if you could only feel the fire that he's feeling. You cannot quench the spirit and we will not quench the spirit. Go ahead, Pastor, rejoice. Hallelujah. Give him the praise and pastor, the glory. Pastor. 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 Just, just give me a minute. I want to talk to the men. Men, you see me up here. Y'all see me up here. Put myself out. I'm in love with another man. I want some men that's in love with Jesus. Come down right now. There are some men that are in love with Jesus. Come to this altar. If there are some men that are in love with Jesus that are not ashamed that you love another man, come to this altar. I'm talking to the men. Hallelujah. Talking to the men. If you are a man, you are in love with Jesus. Get down the same. I'm in love with him. I'm in love with another man. His name is Jesus. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Brothers, brothers. It's time to take your rightful place. We're lacking, we're lacking. We're lacking to tell people that we are men that love Jesus. We may show it, but we need to tell somebody. You're in the love with a man named Jesus. Father, I pray over these brothers. Thank you for their boldness. Thank you for their lifting up my hands. Thank you, Lord, that we're in agreement that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is the strength of our life, that we're just mere flesh, but, 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 but we are men of God. Thank you, Lord, that we're not ashamed of you. Thank you for these men. Thank you for their families, Lord. Strengthen them now, Lord. Strengthen them that they know who you are. They know why you came, that they know that you're returning. Brothers, release it. Re 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 release it, release it. That pride got to release it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, brother. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, brother.